Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here with some urgent news. Talking about Hurricane Laura. Now, we've been hearing about this hurricane out there that's about to hit land sometime tonight, Wednesday, August the 26th. And how it has been increasing in size and strength for a while. And now it's considered extremely dangerous. Well, as I was working on my class for today, an alert popped up on my phone, similar to what we're seeing here, which says Hurricane Laura forecast to bring unsurvivable storm surge as category four storm. Unsurvivable storm surge. They're talking about a wall of water which could impact areas up to 30 miles, 30 miles from the coastline will be affected by this water. So you can imagine the effect that it would have on those that are close to the ocean or close to the Gulf. So I'm going to postpone the class that I was going to post today, which is also concerning elements, an asteroid that is headed towards Earth and predicted to make impact with the United States on Election Day. And today, I'm going to do a call to action to all of you prayer warriors out there and all of you members of the 144,000 out there and all of you guys who want to be members of the 144,000 out there and all of you guys who are part of that multitude that no man can number. It's time to take action, guys. This is what we're here for. This is our job to help these people. And how do we help these people? Through prayer. Prayer is the tools that our Father has given to His chosen elect to help humanity in times like this. It's time to take action. A lot of you guys will jump up on channels and say, Hi, I'm 144,000 this and I'm 144,000 that. Normally, my only comment is that you shouldn't be telling people that. But now I'm telling you that it's time to go to work. If you are truly 144,000, it's time to go to work. I hope you hear the seriousness in my voice. These people need our help. These people need our help. There's no telling how many people are in the path of this dangerous storm and are about to be killed, made homeless, get stranded, be separated from family members. All kinds of things are about to happen there in Texas and Louisiana. So let's go to work. Now what you're about to hear and see next is a video that I posted about three months ago on our ability to control the elements. This is scriptural text showing us how the Messiah was only our example when he went in and told the wind to be still, he was letting us know that we too have that power. So what you're about to hear is how it is that we're supposed to take advantage of that power. Sure, we have the power, but what good does it do us if we don't know how to use it, if we don't know how to take advantage of it? So in the next 17 to 20 minutes, what you're going to hear is how to take advantage of it, what we need to do in order to take advantage of our ability to control the elements so that we can help those people and so we can be a help to humanity going forward. Like I said, this is our jobs, guys. Do something. Help people. Study what you're about to learn in this video. Go over and find a copy of the Third Testament of the Bible and read about what it is that we're supposed to do in order to help when it comes to these hurricanes, these volcanoes, these asteroids and these other events. We can even help with these riots that's going on. When I say things over and over, I do so for effect. This is our job, guys. All right. So. Listen to this class, pull out your pencil, take notes. I'm going to come back in at the end and we're going to say a little prayer for those people out there in the Gulf. 
You can find a link to the Third Testament of the Bible in the description, both for audio version and a PDF that you can download to your device. In this part, we're going to be looking at verse 132 of chapter 17, which is called the New Way of Worshiping God and the section called the Power of Prayer. 132 says, the elements are unleashed against mankind, but you must not fear, for you know that I have given you the power to overcome evil and to protect your brothers. Talking about the power of prayer. Now this is one of the things we expect in that time that they call Jacob's trouble. The tribulation. The elements will be unleashed. They're somewhat unleashed now. But they seem to be in remote areas or diverse places like Matthew 24 says. They're going to hit home one day. And when they do, we need to understand the power of prayer. See right there where it says, But you must not fear, for you know that I have given you the power to overcome evil and protect your brothers. We have to hone the power of prayer so we can protect our brothers. We are the hope for humanity. You are the hope for humanity. It is through your prayers that you will save humanity. It says, you can order those elements of destruction to stop and they shall obey. We did a class on this not too long ago. Talking about how we can control the elements. See, the Messiah was our example. He was letting us know how many powers man truly has when he's obedient to the law. And one of those powers is to be able to control the elements. We can do so now, even before the tribulation starts. We can control the rain, the wind. We just have to do so with love in our heart. Not for vanity, but to help others. Like it says, to protect our brothers. But one of the promises of the tribulation is that we will see more of the elements unleashed against mankind. So the necessity to hone the power of prayer is increasing. It says, if you continue praying and watching, you can perform prodigies and surprise the world. This is another outcome of this most powerful weapon that the Father has bestowed upon us. When the world sees what miracles can be performed by way of prayer and thoughts, many of them will want to leave the dark side and want to come over to the side of light. They will want to be able to perform those prodigies as well. Others will start to understand that the Father is real and give them hope that He really does exist. And that he really does love us and care for us. And that he is all powerful. They will come to that conclusion when they see that he has bestowed powers on us as well. 133 says, pray with purity. Make communion with my spirit. Do not seek out a particular place to do this. See, we've learned in the other parts of this series that we have to learn to pray silently. We talked about how a verbal prayer is a materialistic prayer. Well, having to go down to the church in order to pray is materialistic as well. That's placing a limitation on your spirit. You don't have to go down to a certain place, a particular place to pray. You can pray anywhere, anytime. In any circumstance. He says pray beneath a tree. On the road. On a mountaintop. Or in the corner of your bedroom. In other words find a quiet place to pray. Pray by yourself. Spirit to spirit. Silently. When you do so your spirit is in direct communication with the Father. 
And when you do so, he will descend to converse with you and illuminate you and to give you strength. So don't be like those who only think they can pray down at the church or put on a show when they pray. Many of them, if you ask them the right questions, will admit that their prayers are ineffective. We cannot afford for our prayers to be ineffective. Remember, our prayer is our number one weapon and our number one defense. We can't go into the battlefield with faulty equipment. Notice back up there how it says to pray with purity. We have to pray with love in our heart. We found out in another section that love is necessary when we pray. Not only can we not pray with hate in our heart, but we also learn from the Shepherd of Hermas that we can't be doubtful when we pray. A doubtful prayer is harmful to us. A doubtful prayer will not make communion with the Father's Spirit. Neither does a prayer that is not full of love for our brother. We have the ability to control these elements, the earth, the wind, the fire, the water. We can control that stuff. We can control the epidemics that are taking over the world. We can control, we can control these wars that are going on by way of prayer, guys. We just got to learn this stuff and, and, and use it to our advantage. I don't know if I've said it in this video. If I did, let me go ahead and repeat myself. Prayer is the number one superpower that the uh, that the 144,000 uh, chosen elect will have in the end times. But the rest of us, we can start to use this power now. It's, it's not like they're, they're anything special about these guys other than they are the front runners. They are the first ones that's going to go on to come back and help us to learn. But we can learn this stuff now. We can learn to use these powers that the Father has given us now. So let's talk about the power of the children of God over nature. Uh, verse 14 says the elements will obey you when you comply with my law and when you ask it of me for the benefit of your brethren. All right. So then we're going to take this little section. There's only a few verses here, but we're going to take these a little bit slower. And this is very important stuff to see right here. He says the elements will obey you when you comply with my law. OK, so this is why a lot of people don't recognize that we can control the elements is because a lot of people aren't obeying the law. The law we're talking about is over there. You can you, you can read about the law, particularly in the book of Exodus, the second book in our Bible. Everybody has a Bible. Pick up the book of Exodus and go to chapter 20 and read three chapters 20 21 22 and 23 there's actually four chapters but though that's what's called the book of the covenant and those are the laws that he's talking about when 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 he talks uh, when he when he says obey my law that's what he's talking about now check this part out right here and when you ask of it of me for the benefit of your brethren, okay, this is important here too, guys. We want to control nature, but we can't really control it for our own benefit, and we can't really control it to show off or, or you know, you can't, you're not going to be able to walk outside with your buddy and say, hey, let me let me show you I can control the rain and say a quick prayer and the rain's going to stop. That's not going to happen. But if your brethren is in some kind of need of relief from the rain and you're and you understand the power of prayer and you are within the law, you will be able to control the rain in order to help your brother in that moment. I've seen it happen, guys. And we, and according to what we're learning here, we can control all of the elements in this manner. We just have to be within the law. I'm stressing that part because it's extremely important. We have to be within the law. But let's go on to verse 15. He says, have I not taught you that even the unleashed elements can hear your prayer and become calm? If those elements obey my voice, why should they not obey the voice of the children of the Lord when they have become prepared? All right. Talking about this, this is talking about the Messiah over there. You remember there was an instance where the Messiah was on a boat sleeping and the wind was about to overturn the boat. His disciples went down and said, uh, uh, Father, are you sleeping and we're about to be destroyed by this wind. And the father, the Messiah woke up and told the wind pretty much to sit down and shut up. He said, peace be still. 
and the the uh the wind just stopped blowing there and what he's talking about here is he he this was a demonstration of how we can control these elements and what he's talking about is how we too have this power if we become prepared and that's another that's the same thing it's saying up there guys we have to comply with his law we have to be prepared so there's a lot of people who who are going to try to start controlling the weather and trying to control elements after this and we should anytime there's a hurricane anytime there's an earthquake going on anytime there's anything going on that's affecting a whole lot of people tornadoes and such that's the first thing we should start doing is start praying for these individuals praying that they are protected from the wind or even praying to get have the these elements to stop and give these people relief but if we're not prepared we may not see a lot of these prayers being answered we may not let's see a lot of relief going on so that's the first step guys is well now i ain't gonna say it's the first step i'm saying start praying now even even if you don't think you are prepared start trying to use these powers now to control these elements but then start getting prepared to go get into these go get into those laws there like I said, it's in Exodus chapter 20 through chapter 23, Exodus chapter 20 through 23. And what you're going to find just just for a hint, I know some of you are actually going to do it. What you're going to find is that you are pretty much in compliance with the covenant. The only things that you're out of compliance with are the statutes. The statutes are these mandatory feasts that we're supposed to be keeping every year. Feasts like unleavened bread, feasts like the Feast of Weeks. Some call it Pentecost and then the Feast of Booths or Feast of Tabernacles. These are three feasts that all of all of um, the children of Israel are supposed to keep three times in a year. There's actually seven of them, but we read that there are three that are absolutely mandatory. And because we are not keeping these feasts, we're actually being tricked out of keeping these feasts. A lot of people aren't doing them. We actually repa replace them. Instead of doing unleavened bread, people are doing Easter. Instead of doing... Um, tabernacles they're doing thanksgiving and that, that kind of thing so the, but other than that you'll find out that many of these laws are kind of like common sense you know how you treat your brother kind of stuff i know i talk a lot about but this stuff guys but it's extremely important let's look at verse 17 he says now when i have told this people that the elements may obey them there have been those who have not believed and i say that they have had reason to doubt for nature will never obey those who do not recognize it and who profane and mock it all right so now uh, there's a lot of people watching this video and you know they, they probably even clicked off already when we're talking about how we can control the elements they're like oh yeah right whatever but you know nature is never going to obey anybody that's mocking it or profaning it you know it, that doesn't that don't even make sense that you pick it on nature one minute and then the next minute you're asking nature to do you a favor who's actually going to do that no not even a person is going to do that now we're expecting nature to do that no it's not going to obey we have to be we have to rebuild this harmony with nature for it to start to have respect for us and start to listen to us all right let's go on it says but he who knows how to live in accord with the laws of the spirit and matter who lives in harmony with all that surrounds him will identify himself with his creator making himself worthy of being served and obeyed by the elements as corresponds to all children who know to obey their father the creator of all that exists okay so this is important right here if we want the elements to obey us what does it say serve and obey do you want the elements to serve and obey you well you have to obey your father the creator of all that exists you know how can you expect that the elements to obey you when you won't obey the creator that that don't really make sense but we'll say that one for another video let's go on down here to verse 18 he says I neither lie nor exaggerate when I tell you that the elements can hear your voice and respect and obey you. He said, well, what about those people out there in places like Katrina when they was having that big hurricane? You know, and those people in Houston when they was having a big hurricane and the people over in Puerto Rico that's having the earthquakes and, you know, all of the stuff that's going on over there. You know, uh, okay. He said, well, why isn't why isn't the elements obeying their voice well I, I i can come up with a couple of reasons first of all are they asking to the elements to obey their voice do they have enough 
knowledge and understanding of their power over the elements to even ask the elements to stop or do they think that these elements are taken over by chance that it's just something that's happened the, the storm is just you know it's, it's just bad luck that they're getting the storm and two are they obeying the law enough to where they can actually have the power over their elements it's a lot to think about there but you know that's where you guys who are watching this video come in you can actually pray for these individuals knowing how this is working when we see these storms on television and all on the radio we hear about the storms on the radio or whatever we can go in and we can start to 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 take action by way of our prayers a lot of times that's why i even listen to the news um, even more than I used to I listen to the news nowadays looking for opportunities to, to pray for people in trouble when I start to hear about earthquakes and start to hear about storms and that kind of stuff I go into prayer warrior mode and start praying for these in individuals talking about like epidemics and all kinds of stuff we have all kinds of um, things giving us the opportunity to get in and help our brothers by way of our, our prayers and these powers that we have. So now, let's get in the fight, guys. Let's go to work. Now, here are some ways you can help. First of all, you can help get the word out by supporting this video. Hit that share button down there. When you do so, it puts up options for you to share. Real easy. All you have to do is click a button and it's actually going to help you to share this video on your Facebook or on your Twitter. Leave a comment on this video or even go in and look at the other people's comments and leave a reply to those comments. If they've left a good comment, hit the like button. If they've left a bad comment, hit the dislike button. All of those actions trigger the YouTube algorithm to make this video available to other people on YouTube and will help this video to get seen, getting other people to act as prayer warriors and start to help these people by way of prayer. And then when you're on other channels and other videos and you're giving comments, post prayers in those comments for those people out there. Many times people don't remember to pray for one another. And a lot of times they don't know how to pray at all. And if they read your prayer in a comment, they too can become prayer warriors helping those people. You can post prayers for them on your Facebook or in your Twitter account. We really need as many people as we can praying for these people so that we can tilt the scales in their favor. We will save lives guys and we will be rewarded for it let us pray our father in heaven hallowed be thy name father abba we come to you today lord asking that you will look down on those people in the gulf of mexico lord they're in this storm path lord we ask that you will curb the wind that you will curb this hurricane that you will steer it away from your people and steer it away from the people that need your help the most lord we ask that you, of course your will to be done lord but we let it be your will that you will change the trajectory of this hurricane lord and help those people down there we use our power of prayer we use the power of our thoughts in order to help our brother just as you told us to do we're in in the fight for you we're in the fight for these people lord in your son's name we pray amen and so be it